Hi, I'm Thomas Pesquet and welcome aboard the International Space Station. Hi Thomas, welcome on my channel. Russian spaceship called the Soyuz uh, and it took us two days to get here and I will spend a total of six months in, in my new home in space. So in the future, uh, astronauts will travel to destinations much farther away, like Mars for example. Their trips could last two or three years. That's what they told me 20 years ago, man. They told me I would have a flying car by now and we would have a population on Mars. But nothing, man. Before we can travel that far, we need to rise to some important challenges. And we need your help. What? Why do you need my help? I'm not a space agency. Uh, you know, maybe if I can get a small part of your budget, like 20 or 25%, you can get my help. If you were an astronaut heading to Mars, think about some of the things that you would need to stay healthy. A shower. Let's talk about food. Whether on Earth, Mars or the Moon, we all need fruits and vegetables. But fresh food only lasts about a week. We would never be able to carry enough for a three-year mission. So we need your help to develop a new skill, space farming. Uh, wait, hang on, are you serious? You need our help to help you figure out space farming? Wait, 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 hang on, let's look this up. Let's be scientific. President Dwight D. Eisenhower established NASA in 1958. So you're in space for like 60 years and you don't know how to grow food in space? What have you been doing for 60 years then? You've been on the moon and stuff, but haven't figured out stuff like that. Uh, you figured out how to make a shower in space and you lost it or you don't do it anymore. What's wrong with that, man? If you want to be safe in space and go to Mars and do all kinds of missions like that, you need to figure out the basic stuff first. And now after 60 years, you have the balls to come ask us how to do it space farming. We're already growing lettuce here on the space station, but no salad is complete without tomatoes. Tomatoes are delicious and nutritious. They taste and smell great. Plus, tomato plants could benefit our environment by removing carbon dioxide and adding oxygen and water to the air we breathe. Tomatoes could be a space superfood. And this is where the tomatosphere comes in. Will tomatoes grow the same in space that they do on Earth? Help us find out. Count how many of your tomato species germinate and send us your results. Who knows? Maybe you will be studying how to grow the food that you will one day eat as an astronaut. <laughs> I don't think so, man. Why are you trying to get the help from kids? Do you want scientific results from kids to help you figure out all your stuff? Oh shit, maybe it's copyrighted by Her Majesty the Queen. Sorry, ma'am. Anyway, NASA, do you know that people have been doing research and experiments and stuff on how to grow tomatoes and any kind of vegetable you can imagine for like forever? So why do you need the help of kids? Look here, how to grow a square tomato. You can find anything you can imagine and if in case you have problems with growing tomatoes in space, they invented something else called a freezer. Like you can freeze tomatoes and anyway, doesn't matter. Since you need my help, I'm here to help and I will do it for free. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk to you anyway about the potato satellites, because I have many, many, many questions about them. Because you see, a while ago we got news from the International Potato Center. I was waiting for that, but it seems that the website of the International Potato Center is down. How come? Anyway, potatoes may be able to feed real life red planet explorers, just like in the book and movie The Martian. Yeah, I remember last year the International Potato Center said they were gonna test if you can grow potatoes in space. So here are the results. But what I'm more interested in is, how the fuck did they do this? So, let's keep reading. 
Researchers at the International Potato Center in Peru planted a potato tuber in a CubeSat size container that mimics Martian temperatures and atmospheric conditions. The potato sprouted, as you can see in the time-lapse video. If the crops can tolerate the extreme conditions that we are exposing them to in our CubeSat, they have a good chance to grow on Mars. So they are growing potatoes in CubeSats? That's why I have so many questions. Maybe I can ask a few. NASA, if you would be so kind to answer my questions, please. Here come question 1. A CubeSat is 10 cm by 10 cm. How can you fit all of the following things inside of a tiny cube? I will not say all of the things, just pause the video and look at it if you want to know. Question 2. Why do you even use CubeSats to test this? Would it not be much cheaper to simulate this kind of stuff on Earth? You can use the ISS to simulate how to grow things in G4G, but you could use this money to freeze tomatoes and improve on your space freezer. And what the fuck did you do with my money I have sent you for the ISS shower? I was so kind to do a donation campaign for you guys because I think those silly astronauts really deserve a shower, maybe even a bath. You invested my money in potato satellites? You really disappoint me, NASA. Anyway, question 3. Instead of going to Mars, why don't we make a base on the moon and use it to grow tomatoes? If we can do that, we can go to Mars and pick up tomatoes on our way to Mars. We could even refuel on the moon and have a drink and stuff. Why are we not going back to the moon? NASA? Did you lie to us? What made you so scared of the moon? Don't tell me it's aliens. Why are you so scared? Why are you not going back to the moon? Maybe did you lie to us? NASA? Please don't tell me you lie to us. Please. I want my own potato satellite, man. I hope you didn't lie to us.